Hi, it's Vish. Thanks for listening to Creative Control. If you'd like to support the show financially by making a monthly flexible donation to keep this podcast going, please visit patreon.com slash creative control today. Cartel Madras is a hip-hop duo consisting of sisters Iboshi and Contra. Originally from South India, they were raised in Calgary, Alberta, where they cultivated their own kind of empowering genre known as Gunda Rap. Sub Pop Records recently signed Cartel Madras, based both on their riotous and joyful live show and their recent mixtape, Trappistan. Iboshi and Contra were in Guelph recently to perform at the Hillside Festival, But before they caught a shuttle from their hotel room to Guelph Lake, they made some time for me to discuss their lives, how they became great rappers, their parents, Indians hating on other Indians, how they support brown women and LGBTQ plus people, their new EP, which is coming out soon, and much more. Part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and... With the support of listeners like you who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly donations at patreon.com slash creative control plus in-kind support from CFRU 93.3 FM, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton, this is the 493rd episode of Creative Control featuring the wonderful Iboshi and Contra of Cartel Madras with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Y'all trying to get it in Cause I'm here to win Here to send Not be a has-been Okay And not be a has-been Okay Yeah Okay so first I'm a flex in your chin You know how it is I'm just trying to get it in Ran 10k at the gym I, Trying to find a 10 really? What's wrong boo You looking kind of thin I'm a snake in the grass Have you seen my ribs I'm a needed guy With balls, rings, and chips Need a guy not too I, shy I, Fuck him in the whip Men with the dick game Freddie Gibbs Blue all around the country Looking for that shit You want a girl with an ass You're not the good dick Gonna act really crass Like a kind of damn lick Gonna have to pass On your micro bitch Baby cut the sass You're just my Monday trip Fuck your questions, man, and stick to you, dumb bitch. Well, cut the fade, trim the hair. Oh, Lord. <laughs> more EQ, please. Uh, more, oh, EQ, more EQ, and I need you to compress the air. <laughs> you punch the toilet. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you as well. You. Thank you for <laughs> making time for me. Uh, just so people get used to your voices. I'm a Boshi. You, you knew what I was going to say right away. That was amazing. <laughs> I, I, how did you know that? I, that's remarkable. It's like you're a seasoned pro. I was reading your mind, actually. Aboshi. 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 Yes. I'm Vish. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm Contra. Contra. That is a contradictory name. Yes, it is. <laughs> is that your given name? Why? No, no. no. <laughs> Contra. I'm Vish. It's My nice. Indian parents <laughs> named me Contra. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Guelph, first of all. Thank you. Thank you. Have you been here before? I have. I have never. You have? I have. Let's start with you have. <laughs> I have been here, unfortunately, to visit uh, the younger brother of someone I knew. Awful experience. Not because of Guelph, because of the people. But, um, yeah, so I've been here for two hours. Yes. Okay. But <laughs> I won't dive, I won't get into the awful experience. It yeah. wasn't Guelph's fault. Yeah, no, it, it's, it looks pretty today. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's a fine little <laughs> yeah. town. It's Beautiful fine. town. It's yeah. here from Calgary, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And have you been, you've never I've been never to I've never been to Guelph. And what do you make of it so far? You've been to the hotel. We have just driven in. Mm-hmm. We got to the hotel lobby. The receptionist was very kind. Good. Yes. That's all I have. Okay, Excellent that's good. Service. That's good. Now, I understand that you're from Calgary, mm-hmm. yes. but you're n- both in Toronto now? We're, yes, we yes. just moved we to moved Toronto yesterday. yesterday. Okay, and, yeah. and what we haven't established yet, sisters? sisters? Sisters, yes. We were both born in India, actually. In India? Yes. yes. What yeah. part of India? South India, South Chennai. India. Chennai. I don't think I've been there. It's very cool. It's lit. I don't remember when, where I've been. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to India once because okay. my parents are Indian as well. Okay. So I've been there in uh, 1989. Wow. How old are you again? If you mind me um, asking. I'm 12. <laughs> I'm 10 and 12. <laughs> Were you born in 1989? Uh, no. Definitely not. <laughs> so I was there when I was like 12. Okay. Oh, so I, actually 12. I was 12. Okay. I was literally 12 years old yeah. and uh, maybe turned 13. And it was a strange culture clash for me. Where are your parents from in India? Delhi and Mumbai. Okay. Okay. So we went there 
and to Agra and Jap- okay. Jaipur and like a bunch of places. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I was very resistant to my culture. I think when you're that age and you're like a young brown kid, you're it's like, hard not to be. Yeah. Honestly. Well, it's interesting because I felt more culture shock being in India dressed in my Western mm-hmm, clothing. Mm-hmm. Like they, all the kids would laugh at me. I was wearing like a shirt, a sweatshirt that had the Joker from Batman on it. Mm-hmm. Huh. And all the kids were wearing like kurta pajamas. Yeah. And they would laugh at me, like openly laugh at me <laughs> in their groups. <laughs> and I felt like an outsider. It was very strange. Oh, yeah. Except, I mean, it brought me back to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling weird. So yeah. when did you leave India? We uh, were fairly young, both of us. Yeah. Um, like left. her, like um, she we was were in, in Florida, Florida first. For, like very briefly. <laughs> <laughs> my parents traveled a lot when we were young. They were like traveling so, a fair bit. It's also a traumatizing experience is when we went to Florida. Yeah. I hated Florida. <laughs> hated. Really? Well, I was at the same age, I think. It was the same time and yeah. we drove down in a Nissan Sentra. It was all packed in. Mm, I, I was mm-hmm. in a bad space. So just, you've been to two two of the... I'm getting traumatized by this That's conversation. That's also like puberty for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Traveling during puberty is very difficult. It's, like going back to India when I was 13 versus... 18 I thought you difference. were 12 dude um, How could right, you do so any I'm of a 12 year old. Yeah, this time traveling so doesn't make any sense. So when I was three and five, this narrative is not <laughs> no, holding up. No, but it up. was like going to India when I was going through puberty was a horrifying experience. Would not recommend. Yeah. Um, and then going back, you know, post puberty glow up, it was lit. I mean, when I went to in- <laughs> India during puberty, it was... Do you have to go while you're... We've all gone yeah, when we were like going a, through yeah, puberty. Yeah, it's experience. It's Your parents are like, thing. let's put them through it, you know? Yeah. Let's, let's give them the taste that they need so that they, like, come out of this really appreciating what they have. And I could say for sure, going to India during puberty, especially, like, as someone who grew up in Canada... The first time we went, I was much younger, and it was a lot of fun. Did we establish how old you were when you left? You were born there, you say? We were, we yes, were born we there. there. We left in 99. Okay. Something yes. like that. So you What were... I'm doing is hiding my age from Okay, you. okay. Yeah. So you were, you were young, though, when you left? Or yes, you we were, were very, young. very young. Do you remember India from that period? Yes. Not okay. from when I was a baby, no. What's the age difference between you two? 15 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not a cop, by the way. I'm not trying to. I'm so scared right now. I'm not narking. We're four <laughs> years apart. I four feel years apart. Okay. Super narked. Okay. And you're younger. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you have no sense memory. No, of, I am. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you have no sense memory of being in India as a young person. Not from when I was born till when we moved. Okay. And then we went back um, when I was like fairly young, and I remember that okay. because I got to like hang out with all of the animals and so i was really enchanted but then uh, when i returned during puberty i was not so enchanted (laughs) and i was not enchanting so i didn't have a great time okay and then um we've been like several times since and we've done some work in india too but it's different every single time Mm -hmm. yeah but we do really love it there okay so you end up in florida for a spell parents work stuff yeah, probably yeah, yeah. and then you end up in canada we so florida we, they end up in florida they go back to india to have me oh i see okay and yeah. then we go to canada okay okay yeah. and why calgary do you know why calgary um i assume work the oil work. boom yeah oh your parents are into the like oil? everyone who was an immigrant there was like because my dad's an engineer so they were uh, like off okay. we go yeah. we had a few choices to pick between and i don't know why they picked calgary i don't know why either because they could have gone back to florida because that's where yeah. our mom did her postdoc Oh. So they could have gone back there. Yeah. They could have gone to Toronto. They could have gone to London. But, alas, okay. we picked Calgary. Calgary. Mm. You know what my dad does or did? He's a, he's around still, but he's retired. He was an engineer. So there's a lot of weird connections here. Yeah. As you're, as yeah. I think you might be related to us. We might be. Well, we're, yeah. all Indian, we're all right? Indian, right? Yeah, so we have all, to be related. I mean, yeah. your name is Vish. <laughs> it's and Vish. 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 Yeah. And my first name, which I will not say, is related to yours. <laughs> really? I'll say it off the mic later. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we're very connected <laughs> yes, on that level. Yes. Okay. In fact, if you guys sat beside each other right now, like I probably would be my brother. wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. We're fairly similar yeah. seeming. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, you end up in Calgary, and you've already we've already talked about puberty, so that happened. <laughs> so Calgary is a formative time. You're coming into your own. How are you getting into music exactly? Music has been with us since we were very young because we were like enrolled into piano and dance since we were like three years old. So we've been involved in the arts for mm-hmm. a long time. Mm-hmm. Your parents were interested in it, obviously. Yes. Yes. They, yeah. Yeah. Our mother was very interested in it in having us cultivate that aspect of our skill set and so we 
were in singing lessons, piano lessons, dance, dance lessons. lessons. Um, did you have an interest in it, or was it just you say your mother was interested I, in we cultivating did. it? I think we were always. It was a cool thing because we got to through those like like formal lessons and training we got to make our own music eventually right so yeah. like being enrolled in piano from a very young yeah. age obviously when you're learning like your first scales you're not having a great time but very early on i was i learned that i could write my own music and yeah. play piano how i wanted to mm-hmm. so you, it was a, a door opener sorry i'm gonna shut up <laughs> no no i was just gonna say like you just i i mean there's periods of it where you hate it because i remember when i was young i was like i don't want to learn indian dance but then, like, oh, they put you in that. They put yeah, you in so Indian we, dance. Yeah, so we were well. trained in Indian dance okay. and Indian singing as well. Oh, okay. And, and then also, also like Western, like Western, Western dance piano and, and, yeah. and yeah. stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, my mom so was both. very like, "You have to excel in this country. We're immigrants. We had time for anything because, I like, really don't know because either. it was insane. Because I was in like ballet, jazz, hip hop, Bharatanatyam. I don't know how we had the time singing, or money. Piano. No idea. Oil, it's, oil boom. Oil boom money. Lots oil of money. Yeah. Oil mo- All money of is, is time as well, right? So <laughs> yeah. you get the oil boom and the money. That's why you were inside. So my kids are like that. They're in, like every day. There's everything. something. Yeah, there's something. Yeah. yeah. Which is a, which is a, it's nice. You look back on it fondly. Yes. During the time, it's a yeah, lot of Durham and strength for sure. I'm having yeah. my son has come and gone with it with the piano lessons, and he's kind of on the like I don't want to do this anymore, and we're trying to keep him in it. Yeah. Any advice? I would say. Does he like music generally? He loves He's a it. music head. Then let him learn songs that he likes to play. That's and listen what I said. To. That's literally yeah. what I said. I yeah. said next time you go back to your teacher, do the two songs she suggests, but tell her you want to learn a song. Bring she, yeah, print yeah. the sheet music. Bring yeah. it to class. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting. Yeah. Okay, so you, we're on the same. Yeah. We're still the same. <laughs> I the think same. We're all it, the same. I think it's also like I was like I hate all this. I don't want to learn. And then like you know you one music idol is like i was trained in piano and violin since i was two and he's like your favorite musician and you're like that's what i have to do i'm so inspired now right you when you're that young you really do look to, to your you idols want to be and you're like how did they yeah. do it and then you're like uh did your parents play no our mom knew how to play the the vene badly Really? Was she bad? She always lies about it. <laughs> yeah. She was an excellent dancer. My my dad's mother was professional at oh. the Vene. Like she was a professional singer and like instrumentalist. Oh. And she was like it's and in, she was crafty. It's in your bloodline. A little bit. Like Yeah, my mom's a dancer. She's a really oh. good dancer. She's like she taught dance, she did the whole thing. We grew up with her teaching us dance too. So She can't sing though. She oh, can't sing. Geez, Louise. <laughs> But <laughs> performing arts is in the fam in some capacity, I guess. Yeah, okay. it is. Okay, so yeah. so you you're you're in this realm of learning how to play. Mm-hmm. Do you have a hero? Like you mentioned, like you 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 hear about a hero saying, mm-hmm, "That's mm-hmm. what I did to get where I'm at." Mm-hmm. Do each of you had your own hero, or like because we're we're starting at piano, Indian dance, Western yeah. culture. We're going to eventually get to you being hardcore hip hop people mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so i'm just mm-hmm. wondering about that trajectory the i would say the trajectory even from when we were very young in all of this formal musical training has always been drawing from like a vast array of musical influences and having people that we respected and admired in like classical music mm-hmm. and alternative music indie hip hop j rock yeah. it's always been like a pretty big pool of artists to choose from and obviously there's always been like eras of our time where we have particularly had a fondness for like miyavi or something That's, i was gonna say like up. the very first like yeah. multi-instrumentalist like prodigies in music that like i think we found out about was like because you listen to music and you don't really think about how when you're super young until you're like a teenager think and then about like, how like how it came about or how right. does this artist right make the this? process you know what i mean yeah, yeah, until you're like a teenager and i remember watching like a gacked interview mm. and gacked was like i play everything since the age of five yeah and then and then you feel like a schmuck because yeah. when you were eight you tried to get out of piano class mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally the lecture I just gave my son. Look, yeah. look at me in the eye. I'm yeah. telling you, you can't come back to me in ten years and say you regret. You're, our you're mad father. at me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I said, I'm telling you now. This is for the future. Like this is why you're doing this. So I'm getting into that, but I don't want to be a heavy. I don't want to make a kid do something he doesn't want to do. That's yeah. That's the other thing. Because I mean, I think you do find your way back to the things that you truly appreciate exactly. and yeah. want to. Yeah. Because we took a break from doing classical Indian dancing for a couple of years, and then somehow when we were like older teens we were like let's do this again let's because it's lit it. and we managed to incorporate our love of 
classical Indian dancing and hip hop together. Mm -hmm. Huh. And I do think in some way it it has led us to becoming rappers. (laughs) Yeah. Have you at any point, like me maybe, rejected your cultural heritage and in effect rejecting your parents for their role in Absolutely. your life? Absolutely. Yes. 110%. Rebellion. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. how does that manifest itself for you? As Because you sound like you had parents who were very supportive of what you do now. <laughs> in a way. I mean, in I a mean way. not maybe the content, but the, I, I, and we'll get to that yeah, maybe yeah. just based on the music that you make. <laughs> and uh, But you've had parents who were nurturing of, your, of the arts. Yeah. And you know this. Indian parents aren't always like that. In fact, most of them, like mine, I have to pretend I own. I have, I have to pretend I borrowed a drum kit. Right. I have right. to pretend I borrowed a guitar. I yeah, yeah. I don't have the guitar. Right. Yeah, I didn't yeah, buy yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is my money. They're like, you need to study. You need to make money. You mm-hmm, need to become mm-hmm. this and that. Did you have that? Oh, for sure. Yeah, certainly. Okay, mm-hmm. so you had that parental pressure, and some of what you're doing now might be the offshoot, the product of that rebellion. I mean, in a way, and I think. It's weird, like this whole thing where you're like, "Oh, have you rejected your cultural heritage and whatnot?" I would, I would, I would never describe this as the offshoot of feeling that pressure, because I think we did a lot of that rebellion thing early. Teens. When yeah, yeah, like when we, we did, were like we were like post, bad post, kids post puberty. Yeah, you know, okay. during <laughs> puberty it was a rough time. Like, was, I was really yeah, wilding I know. out. I can't even. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> right? I maybe can't even relate. I thought it was bad for me too, but yeah, maybe you had it worse. I it, don't know. It's weird being an immigrant brown kid in Calgary. It's whack. I want to ask about that, uh, but I, I hope we did. We answer this question. Like you, at some point, you rejected your parents and your. I viewed them as intertwined. It is very much. So when they took me to India, I was like, I'm already starting to get angry yeah. at you for telling me what to do all the time. Totally. Now you're bringing me to this place where you're from yeah. and I can't relate to it. Mm-hmm. I want to play road hockey, not cricket. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I was coming from with it. Yeah. And event, it didn't until I got to university and left my parents and had white people saying, oh man, it must have been great having Indian food all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, like, yeah. what? No, it wasn't. I wanted pizza and yeah, yeah. sandwiches. Pasta. Yeah. No, they were like, no. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, that's, yeah, that is kind of special. I think when you're, uh, especially for us, I think when very early on we were really into music, we were really into art, and we were quite political in our own way when we were young. So we found our way into appreciating India, coming back to Indian yeah. things and Indian culture a bit earlier than a lot of our peers. Yeah, because like I would say like cultural yeah. peers. Do you mean like peers of like, yeah, Indian like descent? Uh, other immigrants uh. in our age range in the community yeah other um nris that we speak to that mm -hmm. are like that have the same background as us there's this cultural awakening that i see with immigrants like us right now where everyone's very proud of their heritage now they're proud right they're proud um they're owning it like there's a there's a big poc being proud of who they are wave and like which is amazing because i think like we'd want we want to be a part of it we want to be leading that but i think we had that maybe a bit earlier just because of maybe where we were and what we were into and who we were surrounded by. Yeah. I think I think a huge part of it was like when I was going through puberty, when I was in junior high, I was like, this is all bullshit. I hate everything. Mm-hmm. I hate that I'm brown. You were angry. I was extremely angry. And, it, and I think it's easy enough to be like angry when you're going through puberty, but like being a, like a a young woman of color going through puberty in Calgary and like having a very developed sense of identity that's fairly well articulated in your tastes but being unable to sort of make that coherent in the way you look and how you want to be perceived in the world extremely frustrating Mm -hmm. so it only adds to making you total shithead Mm -hmm. who's always raging but then i think uh, i lucked out because by the time high school rolled around i had like consumed enough media coming out of india i was very politically engaged i was very excited about participating in the world through my varying identities Mm. so Mm. being accepting of not even accepting but being more celebratory about where i was from who i am what i represent that came fairly early i would say i was 14 15 uh, can we talk about the role of calgary in 
all of that, like all of what you just said. Mm-hmm. First, the kind of suppression or feeling that you needed to suppress who you were and your culture. And then it sounds like in the same environment, you made a realization that you didn't have to do that, that there was pride mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Canada is problematically known as being this multicultural place. Mm-hmm. I mean, meaning that it's that sounds rosier maybe than it actually yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I think for me growing up just outside of this, outside of Guelph, I wasn't really aware of my difference that much. Like I wasn't really told I was different too much to my knowledge. Yeah. Maybe I'm repressing it. it. Sounds like that wasn't your experience, yet you were in a bigger city. Did you feel oppressed? Were you aware of your difference a lot in Calgary? I think we were aware of our difference right away. It's it, it's very obvious in Calgary. And like not only are we Indian, we're South Indian. Mm. So like you are made aware of your difference even within Indian circles. What's the distinction exactly for those who may not know what you so mean? So we're, we're born in Chennai, which is Tamil Nadu. And our, our mom is from originally Kerala. So we're, you know, Malu Tamil, as we'd say it in, in like a South Indian circle. So it's very political within India, you know, the North-South yeah. divide mm-hmm. and like politically, culturally, socially, in every way, right? And Canada is an interesting place because I think it's there's a lot of people from the north here and um you see it in politics you see it in music there's a huge north indian specifically punjabi cultural wave which is awesome but I think when you're a young south indian there's a lot of erasure Mm -hmm. of your south indian identity and even like within indian circles like there's a lot of like miseducation of being from the south and what it means and a lot of people from the north, I think, who are born here, like NRIs, non-resident Indians. There's a lot of people that, like, when I was growing up, I was like, really? Like, you you really don't know anything about South India. That's wild. And I, and I think a huge part of that is the biggest Indian export is Bollywood. Yeah. And that's purely North Indian. Yeah. Very rarely do you see South Indians go into Bollywood because regional cinema is thriving. Mm-hmm. But if the entirety of the rest of the world, all they're seeing is North Indian actors and actresses who aren't even representative of where they're from. But that's pretty much the image that people get to see mostly. And being excluded from that because just of a lack of representation, you find yourself excluded from not only Indian media exports, but also local media Right. So you don't really see any versions of yourself. Mm-hmm. That's fast. I did not think that's where you were going to go with this response when I asked about Calgary and feeling, you know, not mm-hmm. like not present. Yeah. Or, or that you were being negated. You actually went towards the Indian aspect of it. That's fascinating. Yeah. Does that, and that manifested itself in Calgary. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. For sure. Especially because... Wasn't the white people. <laughs> the white people definitely play a huge part of it. But yeah. you you kind of come to terms with that in a different way. Like in both of our elementary schools, we went to different ones, but there was hardly any Asians in our elementary schools. But by the time I was in junior high, there was a lot more Indians and Asians. Yes. But I only started hanging out with other Asians a little bit closer into high school simply because there was a bit of a divide between the Asians that were in my junior high school compared to Asians that had been here for longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there, there's weird it's the whole It's the whole like fob versus not fob thing. Like the fresh off the boat oh, argument. Right. Or the fresh off the boat idea, which is a crock of shit because like yeah. it's always been a crock of shit and it's just a shitty way of like making fun of people. Yeah. Which if you have every... Once you're part of the in-group or once you've been around longer, you're usually, if you're ethnic, you're usually the first person to turn on other people exactly. the same background I was going to ask, you. my parents are, were, maybe are, what I would call benignly racist. Mm-hmm. Like, they're racist, mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't, they're racist. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it's not... It's not even out of a mean spiritedness. It's it's a weird kind of racism where I don't I don't there they, there wasn't like actually they did tell me I couldn't date white people. I, I did. My mom told me white women only wanted me for my money, and I was eighteen. I had no money. Um, I know exactly. So it was very strange. Was your mom. It's kind of strange racism. Like they just wanted to protect the mm-hmm. culture and keep mm. the pure bloodline yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. Some weird shit. So did you have that? Oh, there's a whole 
it's, with your parents i mean yeah it's yeah so, like yeah. that's the thing like it's it's, I wish it's, we had hours to speak about this. Yeah, there's like it's a whole I know we actually don't have that much. Well, you got to catch a, a thing to the, the festival. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, we'll keep going. Indians there's are a, there's a can of worms there <laughs> for it, sure. It because is like, and it's it's stupid because our our parents um like are of the generation where a lot of their peers were having arranged marriages, but they had a love marriage. So them yeah, sort got, of uh, yeah which right is like a, again like another conversation thing. in itself. How can we? Ev- this is insane already. They would threat, they would threaten me with that. I found magazines in the basement where they would circle classified ads for. Oh, geez, yeah. Because our I'd parents tried that, and like we very <laughs> quickly shut that. Like well, very they, they quickly. Wouldn't even really try that without like knowing the irony it of dumb. it. Yeah. Because it's always very arch when they try to talk about <laughs> stuff like that, and it, it, they're like, "Ha ha." Look at our marriage. <laughs> yeah, like it's like. But they had a love marriage. They had a love, they had a love marriage. marriage, and which is so what I'm getting at is like, within their love communities, marriage. that's like a. <laughs> most big, of them aren't. <laughs> most of them aren't exactly, and within their communities in, in particular, it's like their families were like, "No dice, dude!" Like that's a no go. But then they did it anyways. So ah, your parents have some rebellion in them too, right? They, they do, do. They and do. It's, so it's like always like, I I I was having a convo with my mom very recently, and I was like, you know, you were like. You were wilding out. Like you were wilding out when you were <laughs> our age, if not earlier, right? And I was like, so what's the deal here? But mm. they were they were not only like a love marriage, they were from different states, they were from different backgrounds. Different backgrounds Your right? parents, Romeo and Juliet? What's going on? That is, you know, that's wild. hilarious <laughs> because they're <laughs> they like the <laughs> possibly the two most insane people I know in my life. <laughs> like, yeah. And together, who I knows? mean, shout out to mom and dad, but for real. Like, they're still in Calgary? Yeah. Okay. Yes. They're kind of. Calgary is home base for them, but, but they're in India a lot. Oh, okay. And yeah. then they're. Because we have like all the rest of our family is in India. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Now, you're right. We have a lot. We could spend a lot of time on these topics. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to do them too uh, in too cursory a manner, but we are under a slight time constraint. Yes. Mm-hmm. So how do we get? Let's see if I can get us there. Yeah. How does everything we've just discussed mm-hmm. inform your approach to making the hip hop music that you make? Right, right. And also, how did you figure out you would do this together as sisters? That's a little unusual on right. some right. level. Can right. we talk about both of those things? We can. Yes, I think. Okay, so like in everything we've talked about, there's really an element of identity building and figuring out who we are, rejecting part of it, then coming back to it. And I think all of that does lead to Carto Madras because I think we were always trying to be Carto Madras. We didn't really understand it with everything we did, you know, a political project, a um, dance project, music, art, even the way we dressed, the way we spoke, the way we navigated through Calgary society. We were trying to say something about ourselves and we were trying to be seen in in a much larger way than just us. Mm-hmm. Well, you felt like you were representing something more than yourselves. 100%. And, yeah, and yeah. something that I don't think we were seeing. Like, we were like, I think we just aren't seeing, coming back to this idea of, like, we aren't seeing versions of ourselves in the media we're consuming. And returning back to this idea of being able to communicate with the young version of you or being able to like reach out and find people that connect with what you're trying to say in some way shape or form Mm -hmm. it's extremely valuable it's extremely important we thought we were going to do it slightly differently originally Mm -hmm. in terms of we thought that the academic project was the one we were going to pursue this was an academic project no 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 like like the idea of communicating and representing a larger idea Hmm. to a group of people and have communities that we are a part of be represented in a specific way and now we're doing that through rap which makes a lot more sense for us Mm -hmm. but it's always been there in terms of how we're trying to convey what we believe what our agenda is okay can you articulate that agenda a little bit i mean i know we've talked about mm -hmm. a lot of different things i can get a sense of where you're coming from Mm -hmm. but can you talk about that because it does seem like there's a real method to this Mm -hmm. and and things you're trying to express in your biographical detail there's sort of this discussion about sexuality and you know really asserting oneself Mm -hmm. and self-identity so that's there right Mm -hmm. yes yeah so is that what else do you want to say about your agenda so to speak well so we really identify and belong to three specific communities which is the lgbtq plus community 
women of color and the Indian community. And we find that th- these three communities in particular are underrepresented in media and specifically in hip hop. It's fairly rare. And if it is existing, it's in a specific brand or it's just it's just not getting enough exposure. Yeah. Like whatever we've seen has not been an accurate display of what we're trying to say and how we're trying to say it. I think how we're trying to say it is very important here because there's tons of women of color who are queer doing amazing things. But I and think there's, there's a lot in hip hop right now, too. Yeah. So what is it you're trying to say that that isn't being said to a, in a way that satisfies you? I think a big one is, you know, a conversation around sex and sexuality when it comes to brown women. And I think just growing up, representing, I mean, there were hardly, all the representations of it was just like victimizing brown women in like some whack way in a movie. Mm. And I think early on we were like, it just feels like there's this power imbalance here and that's not the way we're living. We're living in a very different way. Like I think we our whole life from a certain age has been about like taking that power back in relationships in just general sexual interactions generally moving around it's been a a lot of it has to do with like how can we get that power back as women of color yeah and i would say like another huge part of those three communities moving in music and why we have really accepted the challenge of being in hip-hop and rap and taking it as seriously as we do is really coming to respect, appreciate, and advocate for the artistry of hip hop music in a way that also maintains the importance of shit that fucking rocks that yeah. you can party to. Because like there's a huge schism right now between like trap that you can like get fucked up to and have a, a rage or two versus um, conscious rap or technical rap stuff like that and that schism is being bridged by several people mm-hmm. but at the same time we want to not camp it up when we do it yeah no i i can appreciate that and it's an interesting point you raise because i want to ask about how it's one thing to conceive of these ideas as concepts you two are if i may sick mcs Thank like you. really great rappers like it's amazing rapping so I want to figure out how you're like, we got to do this to developing those skills. Do you have heroes that you emulate in coming up with your own style? Mm-hmm. And and how do you go? Like, do you have a sense memory of like, oh, we can do this. We can actually. Yeah, yeah, rap. yeah. Like cause that's a big leap when you're like, oh, I might try totally. this to like, hold. I can do it. Yeah, and like yeah. I say, you do an amazing job of it. So can we talk about that? Mm-hmm. I, I can say one of the things is being brown and a woman in canada if you're going to enter this game you're you you already are not really you don't really belong here in rap yes right the game of hip-hop there's not really too many precedents right there isn't so and it's like as a woman like you're just kind of like how's a woman sorry (laughs) um but like you are kind of coming into it and you're like okay people are gonna like shut me down right away and like you don't want people to be like okay like you're just you're just getting ahead here because you're a woman of color right like so it's like Hmm. very early on we're like we have to be really fucking good if we're gonna do this right and in a way it's a chip on our shoulder but yeah you come into it with a lot to prove and a lot of onus and a lot of expectations to meet and break Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like juggling those things means you need to be extremely confident in what you're doing we're also not whack we never do anything <laughs> we are not good at i should really emphasize that's, that's this because anything you do you 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 know how to do it. because our egos are very huge and we hate because of that also like it's fascinating because you're in a practice where you are learning in public as an artist mm-hmm. right you're putting totally. out a record or you're putting out a song and then the next one's got to be better in the grand scheme of things or yeah, to you completely. does yeah. yeah be fulfilling so you're learning in public but yeah. everything i've heard so far i'm like you sound fully formed i because I've been doing this a long time, Mm -hmm. I hear years of practice going Mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. So is that accurate? Like you've been rapping a while? We have been, been, we've been writing and rapping for quite some time. Just not being allowed to, like we were like, oh, no one wants to, no one wants to hear us. It's also Calgary. Like there's no like 
rap circles. This is a new, there, it's a new phenomenon in Calgary. It's happening. There is a hip hop community there, and there are spaces Dragon where Fly you can Empire? rap. I remember Dragon Dragonfly Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. The OGs, but, but growing like, up there, there's no rap shows yeah. other than arena huge shows. There's right. no rap community. So who are your rappers? Are, okay, like right off the bat, Freddie Gibbs. Freddie Gibbs. Shout like, out Bandana, incredible album. That's definitely Holy shit. like. <laughs> It's amazing because like Freddie Gibbs is a is a rapper that is definitely at the stylistic peak while also having the content to back it all up. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like just That's rare. He's a rapper's really rapper, rare. but he makes music you can party to. Right. And, and that's it's amazing. badass it's and it's amazing. lit, but it's very also intelligent. Right. You know what I mean? And I would say like Finding Freddie Gibbs like a couple years back, um, several years back actually. Now it's been a, it's been a minute. Finding Freddie Gibbs, having him really um, inform our sound, would be completely different than the influence say Princess Nokia had on us. Yeah, we saw her live. Huge fans. We love her. Um, she definitely inspired us to really bring this to the stage. And put it on a record Okay Mm -hmm. Seeing her do it And seeing who she represents In the communities That she's a part of Mm -hmm. Was very much A formative experience For us In seeing like Here is A queer woman of color Rapping People really like her And she's Doing a lot of advocacy Through this Mm -hmm. And so in that regard It's it's still lit Yeah and like we sound left nothing like Princess Nokia, no, no. Yeah. but like that's and that w- that was how I would sort of like uh, differentiate like Princess Nokia like sort of influenced us to sort of pursue this more seriously, whereas Freddie Gibbs really informs how we do this. Right. Yeah. Okay, I am just checking the watch, mm-hmm. yes. and you've got to go. Yes. So yes. we have to wrap this up. Let's wrap but up. I just want to say I hope you enjoyed it. First of all, yeah, it was mm-hmm. great. Secondly, uh, Sub Pop, you're on Sub Pop Records right. now. Yes, I we are. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank, Thank you. you. So what's coming? There's a mixtape out right now. Is that what you have out? So or an EP? Our first EP is has been out for Trapistan. Trapistan. That was an yeah. independent release. It came out last summer. Okay. What's next? What's next is our next EP, yes. which is an official release through Sub Pop. Okay. We're done recording it. Okay. And it's actually so fire. Late. I'm going to just say this right <laughs> now. Trapper Stan is dope. I love Trapper Stan. It's really close to my heart. This EP is our fucking baby. Okay. And yeah. And it's insane. And you don't know yet. Obviously, they'll tell you when it's coming out. You just made we, it. We have a... It'll be in the. It'll be before the end of 2019. Okay. Yes. And uh, what else was I going to say about it? Uh, uh, oh, are you playing live? Are you playing the songs live? We are playing yes. some of the songs. We do okay. a fair bit of the new EP live, and it slaps really hard. Okay. Are yes. you coming to? I'm. An, I'm. Yes. Amazing. I, I'm introducing. Rock you, out. Actually, oh, tonight. okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. We're gonna rock out. Day. Very excited okay. now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm coming tonight. Uh, is there one song that we can go out on? for people to hear right now before we wrap up? Is there yeah. something from Trapistan maybe? We, or? Can do, uh, we can do a red notice. Red notice, red yeah. Notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any reason why that came to mind? I it's think the, the EP's five tracks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. five tracks. I think this is the most uh, Carto Madrasi track. Okay. Yeah, it's the most representative from okay. that, al- that EP. And yeah. Everything. And, yeah. and the sound has evolved. When we hear the next EP, we're going to be like, whoa. I yeah, mean, we aren't sure. recording it in a bathroom anymore. Oh, okay. That's, so that it helps. has evolved. <laughs> Huge app. <up>. Yeah. <laughs> Cartel yeah. Madras, this was really fun. Thank you for being on my show. And I wish you the best luck with everything going forward. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. One hand down my shirt when I dance I fuck shit up with no plan I'm good alone and I don't need no man And I get fucking drunk when I can You seem well hung for a stand What is the span of your dick that is still in my hand? Do what you can Keep me around, you get a wristband I'll make him chant This is my super source, dude, I got no front on 24k on my neck when I start now Go ahead and keep my shit, get a rundown Pull up to my show, now you know how I dick down Gotta go soon, so I gotta get the dick now Gonna for the number one spot, make you real loud Go ahead and show me what you got, make your mom proud Get your head down You know that I was just driving at night you know that I would just move with some shit I'm gonna swear that I busted a light I'm gonna swear I did not see that bitch No, no risk for no flight But I still look for a snitch I just be caught up in hype Maybe this song's a glitch Maybe this song's a glitch 
I'm the jiggy motherfucker with my nails done, boo. I'm a curve you on your roster, then I'll curve your bitch too. I'm a different kind of rapper, so profession, never proper. You could bump into my type, which is cheating on you. All the boys around me too afraid to say what up. I prefer a player, but a fucking funny slut up. Fuck a corny come up, I'ma fuck your little nut up. Spit it if you can, if you can't, shut the fuck up. Fuck with my dress if you care. Bitch, if you see now a flare. Boy, you a toy and I know you be scared. Royalty Roman, you know it be rare. Rappers, they think it's unfair. Fat people be soft like a clear. Bitch, be from India, fuck with my dress if you dare. Bitch, be from India, fuck with my dress if you dare. Bitch! Very, very special thanks to Iboshi and Contra of Cartel Madras for being on this, the 493rd episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on all platforms, iOS, Android, whatever you use, Spotify, Audio Boom, YouTube, it's, it's really everywhere. If you're looking for an episode that you've heard about and you can't find it on any of those things for some reason, or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my semi-regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Vish Creative, or follow me at vishkana. Listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, around the world at cfru.ca, or on an actual radio, 93.3 FM, if you're in or near Guelph. Visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. Thanks to all of you who do this. We could use more donations. So please, again, patreon.com slash creative control. Thanks again to Pete's Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts for their in-kind support for this show. Thanks, as always, to Jim Guthrie. You can learn more about Jim at jimguthrie.org. And the music you're hearing right now is by Jim. So if you like what you're hearing behind me, go go to jimguthrie.org. And finally, thank you. Thank you for listening to this show and subscribing to the podcast and, and telling your, your friends about it. It's been a, a hard time of late, but I've been getting nice uh, messages about recent episodes, and uh, it means a lot. So thank you very much. I will talk to you very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>